Hey guys, I'm Devin from Devin Talks Tabletop. This is a YouTube series where the games are made up and what I say does not matter. And this is an episode of Open That with Canvas and Canvas Reflections. This is from Road to Infamy Games and it is a Kickstarter that just fulfilled, for me at least. I think it will fulfill for other people, but I'm not saying I'm special or anything. It just came to my door. And I found this like ninja knife um, in my mother-in-law's kitchen drawers. So I wanted to use it because it looks cool. Hopefully I don't hurt myself. I already cut myself when I was getting the knife. Not, not from this knife, but from another knife. So I'm already showed that <clears throat> I am inept apparently when it comes to exploring other people's knives in their kitchen drawers, which is not something I do very often anyways. I was first, if we're gonna move on and talk about the game, because why would we spend, an, I mean, we could spend an entire video just talking about kitchen knives. I love kitchen knives. Um, my wife and I like to cook a lot, so I like kitchen knives. I'll talk about kitchen knives as much as you guys wanna talk about kitchen knives. And I'm kinda curious, like what the count is on the amount of times I've said kitchen knives right now. It's probably more than you would expect someone to say kitchen knives in a video about board games. So, it was really loud on camera. It was like bubbling. I think I'm just gonna open that up so that doesn't make so much noise. <laughs> now I've spilled. <laughs> Quick cut. Quick cut back. All right, I've cleaned up my spill, but not my finger, um, and we can get started. This is Canvas. I was first introduced to this game by Alex when I went up to play with him and Jesse and Shira and Rena, and I was surprised by how much I liked it. I, I really, when I first heard about this game, I kind of convinced myself, like, I have no interest in this. Like, this is not at all something that would appeal to me. And it took me by surprise. It, it very much took me by surprise. So this is a card drafting, combo making, layered game where, and this is a mechanic or production aspect that I haven't really seen before where you have these transparent cards with artwork on them and then certain symbols that you want to match up. And so what you'll do over the course of time is you see these are rightward facing um, images, but you also have ones that are leftward facing. And so when you layer them together in the same sheath or, sheath or sleeve, then you get a a picture starts to take place, a canvas starts to unfold. And obviously you can create whatever zany illustrations you want to that don't have to have any thematic grouping to them because mainly you want to try to match up as many of these combos of these symbols that are at the bottom. You know, for example, this one has a purple triangle and then a blue triangle and rainbow circle or rainbow wheel. And the symbols match up. Also, the colors can match up. Um, well, they don't match up. The colors can be used for scoring purposes. And you kind of go through the game creating three or so different canvases. And it's either, maybe it's three to five or something like that. I think you can, I think players can complete a varying amount. And so you complete these and then you score them based off of the different scoring objectives and award objectives that you draw for that particular game. And something about it just clicked with me. I, I really enjoyed it. I didn't win, um, or maybe I did. I don't remember. That doesn't always really have like much of an effect on whether I like a game is whether I win or not. Um, but I just really enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. It's kind of whoever gets the most amount of ribbons, you know, that's who effectively does it. So this is the deluxe version of the game, which has wooden um, award pieces, which replaces the chipboard. So I was actually going to do, 
I was going to start a new part of my unboxings because I've kind of done it to the point where I don't pay attention to what I'm opening until I've opened it. And then I just explore and talk about it as I go. And you guys get to see my brain at work. But here's a nice little canvas or a cloth play mat. So what you have is you, you've got your... Oh, I had it upside down. You have your award categories at the top, which are the cards that dictate the type of combos you want to create. And then you have this play area down at the bottom where the cards shift from one side to the other. And if you decide to take a card that's further into that row, then you have to pay for it. And the what that does is it creates kind of a competitiveness or a interesting interplay between when it's valuable to get the card that you want and when it might be valuable to get a suboptimal card with because whatever payment players pay to go further into the row they put one of each of those payments on the cards that precede what they took so eventually you know a card could have two or three or four resources on it and a player might want those resources more than they care about the effic efficacy the efficiency of the card that they take. So that's an interesting little dynamic there. And let me see, is this one of those ones that's gonna open easily, even though it should? Yes, it will, okay. Uh, yeah, so visually, um, I, I mean, visually it's very pretty, but visually, or maybe thematically, it's not something that I would generally get interested in. But, yeah, I just had a lot of fun. I just had a lot of fun with it. It was a very relaxing game. There is a subcategory of games that I and also my wife, Amber, appreciate, which are games that you can play and have some level of like strategy and focus on what you're doing, but you're also able to just enjoy playing and you're able to talk over it. We like talking over games. And that's ultimately because for both Amber and I, the game is the engine or the opportunity to interact with people. I love games, but I love playing games with people. Oh, this tells you how to organize it. Clever. You put the map there and you put the tokens and the tokens and the scoring and background cards. It tells you where everything goes. I'm gonna guess that these fit all these cards, which I'm gonna be very excited about. I love it when things fit. Anyways, so, uh, <clears throat> let's see if these go in here. Let's see if these go in here. Yeah, so th this must be exhilarating for you. Okay, it looks like they will fit. It's a toy, it's a toy squeeze, but we can get the art cards there. I guess one of the things I was going to do when I get to a point when I'm opening games and I don't really know what to talk about anymore is that I'm just gonna start doing pop culture monologues where I just talk about stuff that I'm reading or watching or doing whatever. And it's not gonna be coherent. It's not, it's not, it's gonna be weird for probably everybody. But it's just what I decided that we're gonna do. Um, mm, mm, mm. Alrighty. Sleeves go in that one. I don't think they had a place for sleeves, but I'm putting sleeves in a place. Scoring and background cards. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I should put them in there because otherwise the box isn't going to have anywhere to go. So let's put that there. Then we've got all these tokens. What am I going to do with these? So here's the dilemma. Like, I, I guess technically I could just keep, I could just keep these. But I don't need them because I've got wooden versions of them. So now it's kind of like, well, that just seems like wasted space now. Huh. Dilemma. 
dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. Can this effectively fit into just that section? This is just me fumbling in the dark for your benefit. See, it doesn't really fit very well. I kind of, huh, let's see, let's see. All right, so these are the nice wooden tokens that replace these nice cardboard tokens. Let's see where this all fits. It's like kind of getting to the point where I feel like this is fine. I don't really feel the need for that. Hmm. I don't want to just toss it, but I don't need it. I know you could have a backup, but I just don't feel the need to have a backup. I also have a lot of super solid baggies that I don't really need. Um... I may keep one in there just to be with those cards, um, just in case I decide that I want to pack that differently. But yeah, um, I may get rid of those. We shall see. So I really enjoyed what I played with Alex, and I, it was just kind of one of those games that you're not expecting to like. What? Well, N not Canvas in general, but Canvas in particular to what I typically like was a game that I was just a little baffled that I appreciated it as much as I did. And so it was already, it had just, it had fulfilled last year, the year before, whatever, and they just did the expansion Kickstarter for it, Canvas Reflections, which might I say, if we're going to talk about satisfying production choices, can we just talk about this? Eh. The fact that the art lines up? I love that. I love that. They also did something that's unique because this is supposed to be so, like, an art game. They have little hanging um, hooks or nooks, little hanging sections for if you want to put it on the wall. Now, I'm not going to because I'm not the kind of person that puts something like this on my wall because I have different art tastes in terms of what goes on my wall. I'm also picky. I don't like a lot of stuff on my wall in general. But let's see. Okay, so this is the expansion, which adds some expansion content to it. Looks like we got another category of awards, gold. I don't remember that in the other box. And we've also got more of these art palettes. We've got a physical best in show little pin, which is kind of cute. And a physical masterpiece pin. That's also kind of cute. Hey, I, you know, I can... Timestamp. Um, then we've got more art cards which, man, some of these are cool looking. Some of these are cool looking. Faithful spec. Let's see what's in here. Let's just actually focus and look at what's going on. So, we've got mirror cards. These reversible cards add deeper strategy and also give you increased flexibility to string together combinations of elements. I like that a lot. That means... That So if you can't see that, yeah, that's so cool. So in the other one, you can only orient them one way. They only have one side, one image, and then your symbols. But in this game, the other side is actually a separate art, you know, iteration, a piece, an element that you can add to your thing. So that is different, and those are different. And you get the wonderful ability to choose. So I really like that. These mirror cards, that's cool. Um, I recall that being one of the reasons why I was like, oh, that actually adds some depth to your decision-making process as a player if you get to have cards where you get to determine how that functions. Um, additionally, the new board provides with a wider selection of art cards. Um, does this have just a overview of what's in, in there other than just that one bit? 
Um, okay, it doesn't seem to. Are these also mirror? These are also mirror cards. And that shows right and left. And that shows right. Oh, so these are the mirror cards, this larger deck. And then these are mirror cards that specifically ah, that specifically also have that new award symbol, that gold one. So these go along with that new award type. And these are just the base mirrors with a right right orientation and, you know, uh, left orientation. So that's neat. I like that a lot. I'm excited about what that offers. It's not opening. It's not opening. So, well, then the other thing is, is that because this is the deluxe thing, once again, I've got another... I've already got those, so those can go off to the side. I might just see if somebody wants them. Somebody who doesn't have the deluxe may want an extra set of cardboard chips. I just don't feel the need to keep them handy. I mean, that's why I recycled an entire base game of Black Rose Wars cards because I don't want to hold on to them when I've got the replacement cards that I used from the Seder box. I just, I don't feel the need to hold on to them. Well, wait a second. I guess I need to put, oh, and then does it also give a physical board? So see, the other one had, I'm gonna put those in the same baggie. I guess it had extra baggies. I'm, I'm actually gonna separate them out and do it. Where's the extra baggies I had? There we go. I need to get that back because Maybe I don't want that expansion mixed in right away. And I have the extra bag, so why not? Ooh, that was like a perfect separation. That was actually the card that I needed to get to. Okay, so regular mirror cards. Mirror cards associated with that particular expansion. Oh, wait, I'm going to need another one, too, if I want. If I want to separate this out fully. Because then I can put these in one. And then I can put those in one. Maybe the amount of baggies they gave was for both games. And they were just being smarter than me. So let's see. Oh, nope, there's one extra as well. So maybe those were for the tokens that I am not using. Let's get the ninja knife. Ninja knife. How are you guys doing? It's been, I mean, honestly, like... It's been like three days, I think, since three or four days since I will have had a video posted. Part of that is because, you know, still was recovering from being sick. Part of that was also just busy and I was not as efficient or effective as I wanted to be. So let's look. Physical board. Whoa. Whoa. So it's not a cloth mat anymore. We're not in Kansas anymore. Ugh. Okay, so you get a full-on board to put everything out on. I will say that... Sure, why not? Um, I think that I, part of some of the appeal of the base game was the fact that it wasn't such a table hog because you kind of just calmly are able to set up the game and you have a small map and everyone's kind of like cozily able to center around the map. So a little bit of that charm is lost with a big board like that. But then there's also the question of accessibility. Um, if more people have better visual access. And then also the board gives you a wider selection. It looked like there were more spaces for art cards. So you get more choices, um, which is, is not bad. Uh, I don't know if I would try to use it all the time. Maybe I would, but I'd use it some of the time for sure. I, I like the boxes though. I like, I like how sleek everything is. That's the beauty of, uh, games that are mostly card games is if you don't go bonanzas with all of the components, you can have pretty small boxes. Timestamp. 
like Dune Imperium, before I got the upgrade pack and before I got the expansion, that was a small game. Like it was in a medium sized board game or regular sized board game box, but the components took up a very small portion of it. And with most card games, you can get out of the way with not having a lot. Like Hall or Nothing Productions, you know, the 1066, 1565, and uh, 1817. Um, I can't remember, 1812. Whichever one the new one is with Napoleon. Um, and then the Veilwrath card series. like And Splendor. Just games that are card games have uh, so little components. And I appreciate that canvas did not make a box that was unnecessarily large compared to what was in it i like this sleek look i you know yes you can hang it on the wall but also it just you know this is the primary game and an expansion and it still together is not as big as some boxes that have much less in them so i, I actually really appreciate how sleek this packaging is and the lack of excess in terms of production and box size that they did. Good good content to size ratio. Content to size ratio is chef's kiss. But yeah, so this was one that it took me by surprise, enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to, and decided to go ahead and support and jump in on the expansion and base game whenever it came out. And, you know, part of me was thinking, you know, if I don't like this, my sister would love this, or I could think of other people that I know that are friends or family with that would appreciate this game for, for what it does. But uh, it's it's also just very possible. It's just, just going to be a keeper for me because I liked it. And this is a game that... This game and Parks and other ones kind of show that there can be art and beauty in a game when maybe that's not the first thing that people notice. I'm not saying other games don't accomplish that. I personally think that they do. But for people who don't play games often, you can look at them and be like, oh, those are silly. Um, but this is visually striking and it does something unique that's uh, engaging. And I think that that is a successful job on the part of the designers and Road to Infamy for their production value. Um, I'm pleased with this and excited to see where it goes. Timestamp. So because I have the deluxe parts, I didn't need to punch any of that out. Because I didn't need to punch any of that out, you guys were spared a pop culture monologue. So congratulations. It may come up in one of the other ones. So we'll see. But thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you on the other side.